Whatever translation <laughs> this is, it says rubbish. 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 Consider, Come on, man. Consider like, it rubbish. What's up, y'all? This is the Walking Together podcast with The Gathering. Um, I am excited to be here today to talk with y'all and uh, hang out with these awesome guys around the table. We actually have a special guest with us today, Mr. John Hassel. Say what's up, John. Hello, everybody. And we got Nick and uh, Jordan with us here today. And uh, we got a... Huh? I said hi. Uh, (laughs) You're Eeyore today. Thanks for noticing me. <laughs> um, so today's episode is actually, uh, we, we got a couple questions. And this one today... Oh, somebody wrote this one in? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, personally came up to me and asked me. Oh. Said this would be a great topic. Oh. And um, so today we're going to talk about uh, cussing. Cussing? Cussing. That's why they Profanity. bring the, the Marine Corps expert That's right. as, a, as a former cusser. <laughs> Former cousin. Former. All right. So, well, I think that that actually would be a great place to start. Um, before we jump into the main uh, discussion, like, why, why would you call yourself a former cusser? <laughs> because God convicted me and had me around good people who let me know that it was wrong. Um, the Marine Corps is a community of folks who like to utilize that word for uh, at least once in a sentence, generally. So you could go throughout your day and hear it hundreds of times, uh, any number of certain special words. Right. Um, but when Jesus came into my life and helped me and put good people around me, uh, you know, you, you feel convicted that you can use your intelligence to find some better words uh, to fill those places and, you know, make it safer, more kid-friendly yeah. conversations. So. For sure. I really, 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 really try not to do it anymore. Yeah, it's like a dis- you d- you've disciplined yourself. Yes. Yep. yep. God has disciplined me many times. <laughs> <laughs> He's think- disciplined you to discipline yourself. Yeah. So, um, thank you for sharing that, John. And uh, yeah, so let's let's pick up and talk about because. One of the main, one of the first things I wanted to talk about was uh, the question was specifically define profanity, um, but I said it was about cussing. And the thing is, we have a bunch of different words that we generally associate uh, as cussing. to be the same things, uh, it's, it's synonymous cussing and profanity and all that stuff. But uh, we did a quick Google search and <laughs> saw that there. Were, I mean, there's slight. Uh, variations. So I think it's I think it'd be good to start out with with that. Which one do you want to do the dictionary definition of first? Uh, let's do profanity first. Okay. So I think the one that is there's there's two that are really one that's the most I think relevant to what we're you know because it's always funny. It's like the definition of profanity is the state or quality of being profane. I'm like okay. <laughs> um. But anyway, so it's vulgar or irreverent action speech, et cetera. And then irreverence or blasphemous speech. Yeah. Irreverent, blasphemous, uh, vulgar. Vulgar's a word. Yeah. So, so so vulgar vulgar I don't think vulgar is synonymous with blasphemous. Um no, or bla- irreverent. Right. Blasphemous does have a more Spiritual yeah. connotation to it, though, right? More yeah, of a, a more of a cursing. Yeah, um, but a reverent um, lack of respect. Yeah, which uh, we were just talking about this before we started, um, and I was agreeing with John in. I use those words more often earlier on in my immaturity because I had a lack of respect for other people. I didn't, I wasn't thinking about them. I was thinking about me and I did not care necessarily how, what I was saying made them feel. Right. I was irreverent toward them. 
So listen, to, so I looked up the definition of vulgar, and vulgar is deficient in taste, consideration, or refinement. Mm. Same, um, same kind of ta- yeah, yeah, crudity cool. or tastelessness in one's behavior. So, yeah, you can be irreverent and you can be vulgar, but I don't think many people are probably going to want to talk to you. Right. And we've spent a lot of time over the past 30 episodes talking about what being isolated does to you and how, you know, when you're isolated, that's where all these not only physical but spiritual things come into play that harm you. Right. Uh, so if you're not willing to meet people where they're at and meet them halfway, uh, die to yourself, surrender, right. then you're probably going to be alone. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So what did, did Kyle? It say were, you, were, you, were you ever a habitual potty mouther? Did you have a poo mouth ever? Really? Not really. You grew up in a homeschool Christian. You, you're not. Yeah. You don't count. Nick, are you a reformed cusser? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what? Um, definitely. What was the what was the change in the disciplining of the words that you choose chose to use on a daily, regular basis? Um. Well, my friends changed. Mm. Kind of like John. What John was saying. So for a long time, I just didn't think about it because everybody around me, what that was the normal language. Yeah. My mother and my family, that wasn't their language around each other. Uh, But catch them around the right people, and then it would be. Or when you got mad, it was okay to cuss, you know. (laughs) Uh, But I like I was explaining before, like cussing – to me, it was just saying bad words, not cursing somebody. I'm not wishing right. harm on anybody. I'm just frustrated or right. trying to put emphasis or exclamation on something. Yeah. And so t- that was why I never, it wasn't as big of a deal to me. Uh, and then I realized as I got around wiser people, that it does matter what you say and everybody's not the same and you kind of have to not be a stumbling block for people. So, and then I, I got married, I had kids. Um, you know, you don't want your kids going around cussing people <laughs> out. <laughs> Where'd you hear that from? My uh, it's funny. <laughs> I'll just say that I've told this story, uh, almost everywhere. Um, Shit is one of, probably one of my, if I get frustrated, one of my favorite words. <laughs> uh, and my wife's We too. just lost some followers <laughs> yeah. instantly. Uh, we went ahead to put a warning. No, no, I'm just, di- di- I got convicted. Can we do a beep? <laughs> when Lainey was about three or four, uh, they had like... We go in a room, they got a double closet, and the doors are closed. And she opens the doors to get some shoes out, and apparently there was some, like some wet shoes in there that had been. <laughs> and from where she had heard it so much, she opened those closet doors, and she's like, "Man, this smells like shit." In there. <laughs> <laughs> and How like, old was she? Gosh, she was three or four. Like she was, it was like she's about to go to kindergarten. You know, this wasn't long too long ago. And I was like, Chrissy, we can't have her going to school. Yeah, some kid like accidentally poops their pants and her. <laughs> so then it made me realize like it might not be a big deal to me and it might not right. even be a, a huge deal to God because God knows my heart in it is not to hurt people or that it, it doesn't really mean anything. Right. But you have to be wise and discerning in what you say and when you say it. And so... No, I don't. I don't cuss. I don't change my language in front of certain groups of people, so to speak. But um, it's just a testament to when you are willing to be around other people, and when you're willing to give up of yourself uh, and, and talk to God and, and ask God to do those things for you, He will. And you just have to keep. 
moving. It's, it was a progression. It wasn't just all of a sudden like I'm gonna I'm gonna put this seatbelt on because it's gonna make me better. Right, and it's a progression too. You know, because your normal conversation, you'll say all those words and not skip a beat. And as you start to change and feel convicted about the things, you're like, oh, man, I shouldn't have said that. And you start to feel like I messed up. You feel that conviction. But you could see it in primetime TV. They they say that word on primetime TV now, mm-hmm. you know, and you can watch the culture. At first it was the B word. And, you know, my fear is as soon as it's going to be the F word, you'll start hearing that on right. late night TV. And there's not going to be a problem with it. Right. Yeah. And I think that's... Now would be a good time to go ahead and see what the Bible's got to say about it, because there was a verse that you brought up, Jordan. Um, and I think, because you're right, John, it is interesting to see culture change, right? And really, culture is the one who has defined what the bad words are, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so that's been the that's always been one of the main conversations that I've had with, um, j- just had with Christians about. Uh, cussing and bad words and uh, profanity and whatever word you want to use um, is that if if it's a list, like we, we don't find that list in the Bible, right? Uh, which is probably a good thing. But, I mean, the, the thought around all the words is, um, it's in there. So uh, you want to look up... Uh, what, Ephesians 4? Yeah, Ephesians 4, uh, 29. It says, uh, let no... This is the Berean Standard Bible translation. Uh, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building up the one in need and bringing grace to those who listen. So that um, one uses unwholesome? Unwholesome. See, so, yeah, I think it's ESV that uses... Um, yeah, there's a, let no corrupt communication. Yeah, KJ King James uses the word corrupt communication. Amplified, unwholesome, AMPC, foul or polluting language, corrupt, foul language. Yeah, so CSB foul uses words. foul. Yeah. Um, so so there, there's two different thoughts there, right? So like yeah. CSB uses foul language. It was in another one that you said. Um, but then going back to what was the original one you used, Berean? Yeah. It said unwholesome. 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 And I think that's actually a, a better way to um, translate it. Yeah. Well, because the, the end of that verse, the, the end of that verse, um, you know, is the is the explanation of why. It says, I, I, I don't know what happened to it, but it, um, so the ESV says, uh, let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths. Because uh, it, you only need to use what is good for building up, fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Right. So it's kind of like what you were talking about, Nick, is like kind of like it's not really, in the grand scheme of things, it's not beneficial for, um, for, for building up and giving grace um, to those who hear. Right. Um, but kind of like, you know, in my in, in my walk with God, because I had grown up and had some some experiences in church or just with Christians in general that I got turned off. You know, I was just like, man, you're weird. Like, I don't want to hang out with you. Like, you're proclaiming God, but you're like, you're acting weird. And so it's all in the religious circles, like cussing cursing, whatever you want to call it, is always a big no-no. Yeah. And, you know, eat, and, and smoking cigarettes and alcohol and, you know, drugs, whatever. And so even, you know, I'll admit, even in my, you know, first couple months of walking with God, because I, I encountered Jesus for real, you know, in my mid-20s, and came to the revelation that I had been following myself for so long and knew how hopeless and lost I was. Not that I was like in a ditch, like dying of drug overdose or anything like that, but I just was lost. I had no purpose. And and so I submitted and I was like, God, I don't know what this looks like to follow you. Um, you know, people keep telling me that Jesus is the way. Like, 
I, I, I want, I, like I saw, I started seeking that. I was like, okay, if, if this is the way, show me and I'll follow. And so little by little, like at first it was like, you know, God started chipping away these, these little things of like, that I would, like when I first, you know, started following the Lord, I didn't know what that looked like at all. And I didn't want people to dictate what that looked like. I wanted God to do it. And so he started chipping away things like lust and, and, um, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, I won't, I won't hook up with girls anymore, but you know, I'm going to keep smoking weed because I love smoking weed. And then so God started convicting me on smoking weed because I started getting honest. I started praying about it and I, you know, I came to the Lord and I was like, God, do you want me to do those things? Are these things okay for me to do? Are these pleasing to you? And so little by little, God was just like, <clears throat> and I, and I did my best to be faithful and, and, and honest with those things. And as soon as he said that those aren't good for you, I was like, okay, they're done, gone. They're behind me. I'm, I'm not turning back. And, um, and I, I remember like, I was at a party and we were smoking a bunch of weed and, and, um, this, it, this, uh, I don't know, this thought came in my head cause I was sitting around this table and a bunch of people were using like a bunch of profanity and something just started to turn off in me. I was like, this is not like, I feel icky. Like, and, um, and so I like, you know, by my, I, I was around a bunch of people like this and I just, not that we're smoking weed, but what? <laughs> Thank you for the we, clarification. Just in case anybody was wondering, <laughs> um, we, we, uh, like I just, I just had, a th- I, I had the thought, I was like, God, is that something you, like, is this okay to you? And like, I got convicted. I was like, no, like you got to stop that. And so I even like another friend of mine, um, who, who was, you know, whatever, like she knew that I had, uh, accepted Christ like in, into my, into my heart and was seeking God. You know, I told her, I said, I think, I think God wants me to stop, uh, cussing or using profanity. I didn't use the word cursing. I don't think I've ever used that word for that. And, um, and so I was like, I'm going to stop. And then like two seconds later, like I said, I can't remember what word I said, but I remember saying that word. And then I got up to go do something and I banged my knee into the, into the thing. So it was like, it was like I kind of made that commitment to the Lord that I was going to stop doing it, and I I rebelled, and then I smashed my knee into something. I was like, <laughs> okay, God, like, I get it. Like, I made a promise to you. I broke it. You know, it was, it was just right. like a little check. And um, so I guess long story sh- short is, is that um, I think it all comes to uh, being humble to God and surrendering certain things. Right. And then if if God convicts you of those things, then you better pay attention. And if Absolutely. if if you're if the words that you choose to use is something that you've never like surrendered over to the Lord, I'm like, okay, God, here's the words that I use on a daily basis. Are these words okay? Do they please you? And and let's just see what God does with it, you know. Yeah. And I'm you know I I don't I've never wanted my walk to be dictated off of things that tell me of of people off of people that tell me, like, this is how it looks, which you should always take wise counsel, but people will tell you all kinds of crazy things, right? Like, depending well, on what circle you're in. Everybody's <clears throat> preferences are different, and there's no way, and they change, so there's no way you can know what the guidelines or rules are in a particular circle, and and that's a whole nother avenue Mm -hmm. subject of part of the reason why church is so divided but there's an old baptist joke and i've said it a a couple times on sunday but like you know what what makes a good baptist boy is i don't smoke drink or chew or go with girls that do (laughs) (laughs) and there's this kind of almost shame culture in church that if you do do those things then we get to tell you how to live your life right or how not to and yeah, you're a terrible sinner i heard um john christ um was talking about Is that the comedian talking about this he's pretty funny um and you know, everybody's on a different, everybody's in a different place with God right? as far as their walk. 
I mean, if we're constantly going around judging um, where people are at and speaking curses, death, over, instead of speaking life and encouragement into them and pointing them back to Jesus, who's the only one that can do anything about it anyway. Right. Uh, he gave this example and as to, and it really just kind of opened my eyes of like, you know, I bet if we did that more, the church wouldn't be so divided right. and people wouldn't feel like this was a country club or a social just place in, instead of it being a place of redemption and healing and right and worship uh but he said when earlier on when he was first doing stand up comedy and he wasn't making you know he was doing it anywhere and everywhere for 50 bucks or 75 bucks and uh he was working at a business he didn't say what the business name of the business but um he was working in an office and he was watching porn on his office computer. And he said it got so bad that he felt so convicted by it that he went and told his boss what he had been doing. And he was like, he immediately expected to get fired, but he was just tired of living this life. And his boss's response was, man, Porn ain't my thing, but I've struggled with prescription pills for a long time. And so much so that my wife keeps them in a safe under lock and key. And that's what I have to do to not give in, to set up guardrails and not give in to this addiction. So let me know how I can help you. We'll move your desk closer to someone else. Or let me know what we could do to help you with this. Wow. And John said he was just like, he was like, that was the thing that pointed me back to Jesus more than mm -hmm. any, and it wasn't. And so it just made me think like, is telling people what they're not doing or what they are doing, is that necessarily, you know, are you speaking life into them? Right. Or are you just condemning them? Right. That that doesn't do that second part of Ephesians four twenty nine. It does not, it does not build someone up in need, and it doesn't give grace to the person that hears it. And I say this right. all the time, but it's hard to. It's, you know, I'm trying to get better at practicing it, but you say it all like, if Jesus is the only one that can take, God is the only one that can take bad things that can take what was meant for evil and turn it for good. Right. Then why aren't we just pointing people? To go and do that instead of, well, you need to, if you would do this, this, and this, then that would fix you. Right. God's the only one that can fix any of those things yep. anyway. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. That was, I mean, that was, God was the only one that was able to, to get me to quit smoking pot and doing all that, because I was convinced that just because a Christian said that, that was not something I should do. I was just like, well, I like it. I'm not hurting anyone. And it was only until I like surrendered it. Like what you're saying, like Jesus is the only one that does the transformation. So I, I that should be a huge conviction to people that go around and thumping people on the head with, you shouldn't be drinking, smoking or chewing and going with girls that do. Well, do so, that and are sometimes doing. there's consequences to your sin, but, if you point them to Jesus, Jesus will do that work, and yeah, he'll he'll do it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> he'll do it a lot better right. than than we could do it. Absolutely, and he's going to work differently for you than he did for me or for Nick or for Kyle. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. So when we say, you know, you need to do this, this, and this, or try to do that to help people, because it worked for me and how I could stop cussing or, you know, any of the number of things that I've done wrong. It's working differently in your life, and Jesus is working differently in your life. But it's a submission, submission to him and give it to him and let him do the work yeah. instead of listening to other people and how. I mean, it's a good testimony to hear how he did it in their lives or who he used or how he used. But doing it, submitting to God and letting him do the work is the ultimate answer, like Nick said, pointing them to Jesus right. and letting him do the work. Right. What was the verse that you've found, John? 
I was reading in James three, um, mm-hmm. you know, starting in seven, where he's talking about animals and birds, and you know how we've kind of mankind has tamed all of them, but it says no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And verse nine goes on to say, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praises and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So it's talking talking on both sides out of your mouth. And right. You can't do both. Right. Ventriloquist. You shouldn't. Pretty good shouldn't job, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I was actually going to mention the same uh, passage, John. Uh, I was going to start up a little bit higher because I like... Uh, where it talks about the tongue as a flame, right? Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. And the tongue is like a ship's rudder. It's really small, but it directs. Um, so, to, so too, the tongue is a small part of the body. It boasts great things. Consider how small a fire, uh, how a small fire sets ablaze a large forest. The tongue is a fire. The tongue, a world of unrighteous. The tongue, a world of unrighteousness, is placed. Uh, among our members, it stains the whole body, sets the course of life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. <laughs> wow, I was stumbling through there, but y'all got the picture. Right? Mm-hmm. So sticks and stones <laughs> ain't true. No, they'll break bones. No, no but no, the, words the last could part. never hurt. Right? Yeah, yeah. Words are hurtful. Well, and that's the thing is, um, I mean, because that's that's a phrase that I've heard. My entire life, sticks and stones. Maybe. Yeah, oh. yeah, but words will never hurt. I'm rubber, your glue, whatever it says to me. Now, so. <laughs> Best comeback of the '90s. <laughs> um, but that's so. This this is another thing I wanted to bring up is because I don't want people to think we're being uh, legalistic about it, right? Like not saying a cuss word is not going to save you, right? Like you you got to take it to Jesus. Um. <clears throat> But if it's something that somebody struggles with, and this is something I heard a while back too, if you're struggling with something rather than just giving into it, then it's showing that you're actually working through the sanctification process, right? Like you're trying to become more like Christ because, um, I mean, I wasn't there. We don't know every every word that Jesus ever used, but I'm pretty sure he never said a cuss word. Would you else say it's safe to say that? Well, if I mean, it would be the biblical definition he ne- of that. He, he never. He would have never said unwholesome right. talk. Like he would, would have, have never cursed somebody. Right. He did curse a fig tree. Well, well, that's not a somebody. <laughs> he but did. Did. there was too. Nick. There was did. good in that though. What about the Pharisees? Oh, he did kind of curse those dudes. What about in what way though? It was a rebuke to bring them to a better thing, so, right? I don't know. He told them they were hard, hard at heart, and they weren't never like they, he said they were lost cause. So this is why I like the example of the tongue is a fire, right? Uncontrolled, it starts a forest fire. Controlled, it brings warmth. You can cook over it. I mean, just speaking literally Pharisees, about fire. Pharisees weren't excited about his words that he. <laughs> That did not make them feel good. It made them even Well, whenever you're first mad. convicted about the, something, the does it always feel good? The truth will set you free, but it'll piss you off first. Right. Exactly. So that's why that's why I always go back to... Um, I wonder how many Pharisees turned to Jesus. Well, we have an example of a, a few. Right, but I, like, I wonder... Like in total? Yeah. Yeah, like what percentage? Percentage <laughs> of the Pharisees? I'd say probably 63%. I don't want people to be uh, <laughs> this very specific number Kyle. <laughs> to be misled. I, I was looking for like seventy, thirty, you know, you know well, eighty-seven <laughs> percent. There's the other side of this of what actually speaking, using unwholesome language and speaking a curse over somebody are two different things. Yeah. And that we're not talking about a magic. I'm not talking about like a magic spell or like. Right. Um, Something that's breaking can, down instead of building up. Right. Yeah. Um, like if you say, hey, man, you're ugly, like that can be cursing somebody. Or you're. So. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you want to tell me something, but. 
<laughs> I freaking love you, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I freaking love you too. So, what about the story? <laughs> what about the story in Second Kings where Alicia is walking through town and there's these young guys saying, "Get out of here, Baldy! Get out of here, Baldy!" Right, and Dude, he he's... curses them, and then a bear comes in malls and kills forty two of them. Right, that was wild, dude. Right. What you get for making fun of bald people. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I always So they didn't it doesn't say that they use like what we would consider profanity, but they what you're talking about, like there's a that that difference between it was tearing down cursing someone. Yeah, the intention was to tear someone down and make them feel bad about themselves or you know, whatever. So that could be used with kind work. You can do quote unquote kind it. words. Right. I can tear somebody down without ever using what we would define as a cuss word. Yeah. And then yeah. I can build somebody up with nothing but a string of cuss words. Yeah, I, very true. I guess so. Right. Uh, so don't. this is where this is where I like to bring up First Corinthians ten. Uh, everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Ooh, I like that one. Every uh, everything is permissible, but not everything builds up. No one is to seek his own good, but the good of the other person. So that there's the sweet spot of. Is it wrong? Can't really put my finger down on is it necessarily wrong but when you're thinking about the other person and not yourself then that's the sweet spot of having some sort of gauge of knowing when and where right if we wanted to put percentages on it the the <laughs> I like percentages. <laughs> Stuck on that. I'm a math guy. This is a different. This is a different statistic. If we, if we wanted to put percentages on it, it's more beneficial to not use profanity or what we consider cuss words when you're speaking to somebody, whether or not you're trying to share Jesus with a marine or, you know, some, anybody. Like, if you don't use those words, the percentage of times that it's going to be beneficial. At way outweigh the times that it could be beneficial to use the slew of, right. of profanity or cuss words yeah. when you're building somebody up. Because if you're trying to build somebody up that doesn't use those words, whether or not they're a Christian, like it's offensive to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And so if you're talking to a little kid and you're like, <laughs> you know, you're, you're like the soccer coach and you're trying to, you know, give the, the locker speech and you're using a slew of, of profanity to these little kids, parents aren't going to like that, even though you're like, what? I was trying to pump them up. And um, you know, so I think what I think what Nick is saying, like you got to look at it, and and I think the the Bible verse was clear on what is used for lifting up and showing grace. Like not everybody's going to take it as that, even though your heart's intention was never to be offensive. Yeah, um, it's still whether you like it or not, it's offensive to a lot of people. Right. So the cuss um, words are basically just a list of words that our culture at this time has deemed wrong right right so i mean i don't know what the aramaic was back in the day they probably had a list of different words that were inappropriate to say uh you know where we go into profanity is kind of the thought or idea behind it what is that that you're using that for what are you using that word or that phrase or that because there's actually uh, there's been a word that has been debated whether or not it's actually uh it was a cuss word in Greek or not that Paul actually used. Um, it's scubilon. It's in Philippians three eight. Scubilon. Scubilon. Scubila. Scubilon. Look up the look up the literal translation of scubilon before you. Hold on. I'll, you want me to read the verse? Read the verse. verse. I'll look it up. All right. So I'm going to read it in context. Scubilon. That sounds like a that sounds like a a, a town in like the Matrix or something. <laughs> <laughs> What's the percentage on on that? On what? How confident are you? Yeah, your per- percentage wise, I'm fairly confident. <laughs> All right, like Philippians 90%. three seven through eleven. Uh, but everything that was gained to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have I have suffered the loss of all things and considered them as dung, 
That's the word right there. So that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. What? what, uh, So, Scooby line. Translation. What translation was that from? Sorry. Uh, That was CSB. What does Scooby line mean, Nick? Um, So, what translation we got here? Whatever translation this is, it says rubbish. 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 Consider, Come on, man. Like, consider it rubbish. And scubulon. Yeah, I want to know. Translation of rubbish. What are the. The definition of that is the excrement of animals, off scorings, rubbish, dregs of things worthless and detestable. So. It's bull. Excrement of animals. Crap. Yeah. It's bull Dung. Crap. Bull crap. So that was a fair translation of using the word dung. Right. And so in the cultural context of it was it it was one that was that was considered more obscene. Yeah. Um and so the thing is like whether it was actually or wasn't So would obscene, it, could that have been but it was one that wasn't used a lot. Right. Some people would say that the word crap is bad like i mean bobby, it's not bobby says it's not pulpit appropriate so by we say inappropriate <laughs> would that mean that it's just not pulpit approved or would it be like the s word because yeah. we have like a it's weird how we have like a hierarchy of words that <laughs> right. are like okay like you can say poopy in front of a child but you don't want to say crap and then you definitely don't want to say the s word and so there's right. like this like this weird this weird like i know that's a turn off to some people though like right that when you get that technical, it's like does it, it? It's not the point. It doesn't matter, right? So, and, and that's the thing is because um, I think here, I think it fits perfectly, whether it was obscene or not. Yeah, because you have to think. What, it's like poop. was scripture inspired, or did Paul just like off the cuff say it? But look at look at it in. Uh, I can't think of the word. Um, where was it at? In verse eight, because of him I have suffered the loss of all things and considered them as dung. In other words, everything that he gained in comparison to Christ was poopy. Was just crap. Was just poop. Was bull. Because Christ is that much greater. Yeah. Well, you're just uh, he's trying to paint a picture. Right. Exactly. And not saying that we get to use colorful language to make our verbal painting. No, but there's but. a time and a place for it. Like that's on, that word is only used one time. Right. So percentage wise, <laughs> Paul <laughs> didn't go around Thank all you. the time saying, you know, well, I'm tired of this. Right. I'm tired this of this scupula. Of, right. So just goes back to time and place right. for it. Not all things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. Not but all things are wise. One thing, like when people do that, it reminds me, hey, don't be so hung up on religious things. Like right. it, if that rubs you the wrong way, then it probably means I've been in church too long. <laughs> you know, what I'm, it, it's not about that. Right. And... There's a lot of things of Jesus that don't necessarily have anything to do with the the way we do church. Right. And sometimes just any denomination, everybody has their things that make them whatever flag you're flying, Catholic, Methodist, mm-hmm. Baptist, whatever. And sometimes people get more hung up on the way we do it instead of why we're doing it. Right. And... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna use a uh, phrase that John McGee used to use a lot. It's hard for a dead man to be offended. Yeah. And so, if we're getting hung up on people keeping the letter of the law, well, then there's you know that, that's I don't where the, what that means. Like why why a dead man? 
like because we're dead to ourselves. We bury uh, the old man. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, I was trying to think of like another person. Like, <laughs> I don't know. my bad. That one. That one went way over my head. It's all right. We we pulled it back. Anyway, so I think all in all, if we were to wrap it up in a in a in a single phrase or paragraph, you know, it really does go back to the intention of the heart, but being wise about um, about language. You know, really consider what are our words doing? Are they tearing up, building down? Um, are they useful or not? Um, and less about a list of words than, uh, than caring for other people. Yeah. I think the best way to do that is to surrender yourself to those. So just like an action, right? you know, like I want to do this, but I'm going to surrender and humble myself. And instead I'm going to serve other people instead of being selfish. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, well, I think we've wrapped it up, yeah. Yeah, I think so. You ready? I reckon. (laughs) Here we go. Don't look at me like that. Makes me feel weird. And go. Hey, thanks everybody for hanging out. (laughs) Kyle messed me up. He's looking at me all weird. Um, Thanks for hanging out and listening to us. I love you, man. For the walking to bed. Oh my gosh, dude. Anyway, let's let's start over. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. Uh, talking about profanity and potty words and all that kind of stuff. Is it Christian or is it not? You know, um, the world may never know. But uh, if, if you like this... Um, you know, give us a like or a follow. You can check us out on uh, gathering.com backslash podcast. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Is that right? Gathering, Gathering Surf, Surf City. City. Gathering Surf City. Com. Com slash podcast. Um, you word. can also find us on the uh, the, the interwebs uh, through the uh, Apple podcast. Yep, the fruit store. The fruit store. Are we on all the stores? We're on all the stores. We're on all the stores. And, uh, yeah, so if you like it, give us a follow, and uh, we're going to be putting out podcasts uh, every other week. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, John, for hanging out, and uh, until next time. Is that it? Later. (laughs) Dude, I suck at this. I'm never allowed to do this again. It's all right. (laughs) We did it. You did it. That's how you get out of doing it ever again.